Hi there. My name is Carolyn Dunn and I'm a Dot Mandala artist. I'd like to welcome you to my channel or if you're returning, welcome back. Come on a journey with me while we paint this beautiful turtle. Okay, so today we are going to be painting a turtle. This is the mold that I use. It's from Devon Molds, the Devon Dyeing Company. It's a beautiful, gorgeous mold and the turtle comes out beautifully. I mean, even down to the detail of the little tail on the end. And look at the detail in that face. Isn't that incredible? So that's what we're starting with. That's our canvas, our blank canvas. And uh, we're gonna just make this a beautiful little uh, turtle. And I have uh, one of my subscribers is a scuba diver. So she's really looking forward to seeing a turtle being painted using the Dot Art Mandela technique. Okay, this is the paint palette we're working with today on our beautiful little turtle. In the Dazzling Metallics from Deco Art, we've got White Pearl, Peacock Pearl, Ice Blue, Purple Pearl, and then in the Craft Smart Multi Surface Metallics, we have Pink Tourmaline. In the Folk Art Color Shift Paint, we have Emerald Flash, and then of course, Dragonfly glaze for the back of the turtle and it's going to be base painted in the folk art multi-surface satin pure black and those are the colors we're using here we have our turtle that we're going to paint this time round and I painted him in the folk art, folk art multi-surface satin in the pure black. Okay, gives him a nice surface to dot on. I'm going to do a mandala on his back, and so, and you want to just center the head and the area where the tail is. This one doesn't have a tail. Okay, so you just want to look at all your sides and make sure that everything's coming down uh, close to the same position on either side. So once we've got the, the uh, stencil where we want it, so we'll mark our center spot and then we're going to just mark off See how we're doing there. Yeah. Okay, and then you can just I use a measuring tape to lie across and join all of my lines up. And there you've got a nice template for starting out your turtle. Okay. Once we get that all drawn in, and we'll give it a little bit of a dust because if you have any excess chalk on there, your paint's not going to stick to it. Okay, we're gonna start our little turtle using the 24 on the DIY Mandela Stones tools. And we're just going to be dotting right in the center and I think today we're going to start with the Dazzling Metallics Purple Pearl. Okay, and we want to come right down in the center there. Lots of paint. Beautiful. I don't think I'm going to do another thing with that. Just let that dry and then we'll move on to doing um, a round of dots around there. And as well, I'm thinking of uh, whether or not I'm going to paint the head and the legs a different color. But we'll go on from here and let this dry first. Okay, okay we're going to go in with the large end of the yellow tool. 
and with our white pearl paint. And the final dot is on. So now we're looking good. Let that dry and then we'll move on to our next dots. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the pink tourmaline paint. Uh, it's a metallic paint from Craftsmart Multi-Surface. Give it a bit of a shake. It does like to get bubbly. And we're using the number 12 DIY Mandala Stones tool with lots of paint. Miss line, and so on the next line, we're going to go in and place our dot. Miss a line, and one here, and at the center. Miss a line, oops bit much there. Go in here. And you just want your dot to be, have that line go through the center of your dot. And sort of have a look around and make sure all of your dots are relatively the same size. and try to make sure that you look across your piece, just like we did in the elephant video, and just make sure that everything's lining up right. Give you some nice symmetry. Okay, we'll let that dry. We're going in with our glorious gold, and we're gonna walk some dots. I'm using um, the orange tool, or yellow. Depends on your point of view. <laughs> okay, now you can see our lines. It's really important that we're gonna line up each of these, these axes, I guess, so that everything's gonna look symmetrical. So let's start here. That should be the center of his head. off your tool in between. What I think I might do is go in and try and make these first dots a little bit bigger. We're gonna be using the White Pearl in Deco Art Americana. And we're going to be using in the Dazzling Metallic Peacock Pearl to do some swooshes in between. 
And the center swoosh is going to be in white pearl. I'll start with a dot there. The bottom part's okay. We just want to drag it up a little narrower. I'm going to try using this, this needlepoint tool. Go around in between here, and you can see this angle here is off like this. So we're just gonna, we wanna be at the bottom of that gold line. Imagine there's a circle going around there. Okay, and then we're gonna drag that up, and I think again, I'm just gonna use this needlepoint tool. It's just such a tight space. We'll let that dry and we'll come back in with the peacock pearl. Come in on the other side. One more. Okay, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna create circles, dots, that, that are going to go above each one of these set of swooshes. Okay, and we're gonna do that again in the Peacock Pearl. I think a 15 would be good. And so again, we're gonna get right on the lines there. watch too on these is that you don't want droopy dots. So give them an opportunity to dry a little bit or set in place. And while we're doing that, we can put a dot here. Okay, we're gonna go in with some glorious gold and do a round of dots around this, this peacock pearl dot that we've created. So I'm gonna use the white tool, large end of the white tool for the first dot. And just 
drop down just a little bit. Leave yourself a bit of a space there so that you'll, it'll have more of a peak. That's it, peak. I think I'm going to switch over to the small end to, to walk those dots down. Our center swoosh is going to be in purple pearl and we're going to use the blue dotting tool. The large end and where I want to come is not quite the uppermost dot on these, not quite because we have to save enough room for our last, our last part of our mandala. And we're coming down just below and then we're going to drag that up with the small end of this yellow tool. We're just going to let those center swooshes dry before we go in with the pink because that pink tends to bleed a bit and so I'll wait until those are dry. I might even go in with 14. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. 14. 14. Now we're going in with the white dotting tool and we're going to dot gold dots around those pink tourmaline large flowers. Okay, we're just going to walk the dots around. And now using the white tool, we're going to put in those side swooshes alongside the purple pearl in the pink tourmaline. Now, while using the orange tool, we're going to create some white pearl swooshes that come right to the top of the gold dots on the peacock pearl flowers.
Now we're starting with the large end of the blue dotter and the peacock pearl paint and then we're continuing the swoosh with the small end if needed. Here we're using the white tool and we're creating swooshes but we're starting these swooshes at the bottom of the flower and working down towards the top. And here again you can see that I start with the large end of the tool and as I draw it down I typically switch to the small end of the tool. Now, here I've noticed that on the swooshes that are purple and pink, there's room for another swoosh on either side. So we're going to put in a white pearl swoosh on either side of those. So now we're going to take some of that beautiful peacock pearl paint and we're going to walk dots down the sides of the white swooshes. So we'll start at the top of the flower and we'll work down towards the base.
Here, we're adding some tiny pink dots to add a little more pizzazz to this turtle. Okay, here's our turtle so far. Loving the colors on this guy. And you will see that while it's not perfect everywhere, it still is beautiful. Sometimes you won't have the same spacing on one side as the other, just the way it goes sometimes. And I found I had a little extra space over here and so I just filled in with some more of the purple lines where there isn't space over here to do that but I think he looks fabulous so now what I'd like to do is before I move on to the legs the head and the side pieces here I want to put a coat of dragonfly glaze on his back so Take my trusty sour cream container and what I want is, and again be careful not to pick him up by just his legs or head, I'm going to turn him over because the paint is really just from yesterday. So I just want the parts that haven't been painted resting on there. So this is my dragonfly glaze. I just love how the bottom looks when it's coated in that. So. It gives these turtles sort of a mystical quality. You don't put this on too thick. You, you might need a couple of coats. Look at that. You can already see it. It's beautiful. Just want to get it to the edges, but you don't want to go over. Unless that you were, of course, you were painting some of the rest of him in this as well. All right, let's get you over here. And again, I only want to take it as far as the bottom of him. I don't want to go up into that neck area. Get his other front leg. I don't know, is it called a leg or is it a flipper? I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I am not a turtle specialist, but I have a niece who is, and she's quite big into saving, saving the turtles. And once he's all got a couple of coats of this on it, on the back of him, I will sign him and either put a name on him or a, a little turtle quote. <laughs> or just a positive quote. 
That's what I like to put on my pieces. I love the shimmer. Okay, now this leg back here needs less cloth around him. I always feel like the backs of my pieces matter. A lot of people don't care about it, and I don't know if I should, but it does matter to me. I like the backs to look good as well. How are we looking? Pretty shimmery. Yeah, and this is in the Dragonfly Glaze, uh, 44383. It's by Folk Art, and they have several of them. They're color-changing top coat. This one sort of goes from purple to blue to green. Love that. Love that. Okay, let it. One more little touch there at the tip. We'll put another coat on him for sure. You don't want to put it on too thick or it gets sort of a milky appearance to it. So we'll let him dry. I'm going to write, good things take time. Good things take time. Start it up here. Okay, so now that we have two coats of Dragonfly Glaze and we have signed the back, we're going to put some varnish on it and that will protect it while we're working on the rest of the piece. So I just use Liquitex High Gloss Varnish and I use a foam brush. I pour it into a little yogurt container, foam brush, and just put it on a thin coat. I always say not too thin because it leaves streaks and I really find that in my bigger pieces. So put enough on. We don't want to get any, we don't want that face cloth sticking to it. On my bigger pieces, I always varnish them, like do the back, paint it, sign it, date it, varnish them uh, first before I do the front, anything with the front side. And it just protects the back. Let that dry and then we'll put on another coat or two. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of delicate work here. Working on putting gold just in that section there. Again, this will take a couple of coats because this doesn't cover extremely well. It does fine for the dots, but when you're painting it out, So here you want to try and stay along that line, not go above it. A bit of a steady hand if you can. And yeah, let's start back here. Back here where we can actually see something, eh? <laughs> I'm very fond of metallic paints. I love the look of them. And we just want to very lightly bring that gold over the top. So I'm going in with a flat edge brush here to try and get the bulk of this on. And I can touch up with my fine detailing brush there. And if you get any where you don't want it, you can always come back with your, your black base paint and touch that up as well. What and while it's drying, we'll think about 
what it is we're going to do with his legs and his head. Today we're going to be using Color Shift in Emerald Flash and we're going to use this to paint this beautiful turtle's head. So it's a little bit tight in through here. We're going to end up doing a metallic blue on the tops of his flippers. When we do the green here, we're just going to come up to that edge. So let's just start that now, shall we? Let's just come up to this edge. This might take a few coats to cover since I, in all my wisdom, I painted it black, the whole thing to start. But it is a beautiful green and it just shimmers. And you can see on this turtle that they have an eye, they have eyes, they have a nose, a mouth, so we can paint all that detail in afterwards. It's really interesting on these turtles and I've molded a number of them, is that whoever made the mold, there's a little bit of their fingerprint right at the neck there. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so far so good. Now, it doesn't look fabulous yet, but it will when it gets several coats on it. I promise you. <laughs> okay. I think we will let him, him dry until we can put on another coat. But you can see how that's going to turn out. It's going to be beautiful once we get a few coats on there. And then we're going to do the metallic blue. In, that's in ice blue with the dazzling metallics. Who thinks we can do this without getting our fingers in the paint on the head? Me. We're going to try it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love that. Love, love, love that. So remember, we're not going underneath those feet. Flippers, whatever they're called. Somebody, somebody comment and tell me what they're called. Okay, and this will be the same where it's going to need a few coats. Okay. Let's get back to doing these legs, shall we? This one gets tricky right in there because you don't want to get over into that gold. Just right up to it. That's why I find these flat edge brushes sometimes are good for that. There we go. Bit of a brush ridge there. Again with the uh, emerald flash. We'll define his mouth and his eyes and his little nostrils. Well, on this piece, I'll probably do it in black. And then we're going to move on to his flashy little legs. Ice blue. And once we've built up a few layers of the ice blue, it's just beautiful too as well. All right. So what are we going to remember? Don't touch the head. 
do not touch the head. So let's start with his back legs here. I've done quite a few of these turtles and um, they always look so cute when they're done. And I enjoy putting little sayings on the back, little quotes, positive affirmations, that sort of thing. What have we put on him? Good things take time. Perfect for a turtle. Just perfect. Okay, so there he is ready slowly to go off as a turtle does to dry. I think his legs look good and we have to make a decision now whether or not we're going to dot on the legs. And I'll not be putting any lipstick on this, <laughs> this turtle. So I just take um, some black craft paint, black acrylic, and I'll do his eyes and those little nostrils and his cute little smiley mouth. But I do it all in black. And I like it. And I like it. I'm loving the look of this turtle. Good things do take time, don't they? <laughs> I think I'm going to dot his legs. Um, I like to just do a series of dots that will progressively get smaller and just follow that line of his fin. Um, and I think I'm going to do it in the same color as his head. It's either that or the white pearl. Okay, now I have to think about it again. Okay, let's try something. I've put um, saran wrap on three of the legs. We have three different colors that we're thinking of trying. The pink tourmaline, the same color as the head in the emerald flash, or the metallic white pearl. So, let's just give it a try and see what we think. Let's try, um, let's try one with the green and see what we're going to think of that. I don't know. Let's try one with the pink. And we'll try one with the white. The green, I'm not fond of. I'm not. I'm not liking that. The pink pops beautifully. But the white is lovely as well. So, we'll have to make a decision. Well, honestly, after looking at this for a bit, though the pink really pops nicely, I think the white is gonna be, the pearl white is what's gonna bring that home. I really do. So that's what we're gonna do. I get to choose. <laughs> so what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna walk our dots from here and just down to the edge there. And use the blue dotting tool. Okay, now this white pearl sometimes can be sticky, as in it will, will pull, so we just need to be careful with that. And we're going to do the same down the back, along that same line. Okay, it's two seconds later <laughs> and I want to put some swooshes in and I think I will go ahead with the pink and put swooshes in. We'll start with his back legs here and we're going to start with a swoosh there and we'll drag it down to that point.
Love it. Love it. So, let's try and have one here. From here, I think we're going to separate that with a dot. So let's do one from here. A nice, beautiful swoosh. So now, what are your thoughts on a green dot in there? No. Purple. Purple. Purple just hasn't been used enough. <laughs> I found a spot to put the green. <laughs> I just can't stop. Sometimes I do things along the side, like even just embellishments with a contrasting color of paint, and I'll just do stripes along it, or I will dot along it. But he's getting busy now, and I think that's a nice contrast there. All right, so like I said, we're going to come back. We're going to do his eyes, mouth, and nostrils, and call it a day. Can you see his little eyes there? We're going to dot right on his eyes and just that subtle, just a tiny little dot. Let's see, do they both appear the same size? They do. Now see the little nostrils there? We're gonna do that in black as well. Just want just a hint in there, like that. Okay. Now the mouth, we're gonna wait until he's fully dry because it takes patience um, and a steady hand. <laughs> Both of which I don't usually have. <laughs> okay, let's let him dry. All right, I couldn't leave it. I just couldn't leave it. <laughs> so I want to bring a purple swoosh down on that side. And I'm gonna do it. Can you see? Follow up with a small end there. Okay, 
that sort of ties everything in together. I think he's good. Let me see that. Excellent. Okay. It's that time. It's time to varnish. We're using Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. And I just pour some into my little yogurt container. And because he has so many intricate little spots, um, I'm going to start with a brush. Normally I would use a foam brush. And what we're going to do is I've just placed parchment paper over top of a yogurt container because it's smaller than what he is. And I don't want anything sticking, any varnish sticking to that because it'll make a mess of your bottom. And remember, we've already varnished the bottom. So we'll start with his legs and arms and whatnot and go from there. And he'll take a, a couple of coats, but that's okay. We don't want any drips, so because of these little crevices, you can get pooling of the varnish, so you have to be careful of that. And then just get in there and get that out of there. Get his head while we're here. And then I'm gonna switch over to my foam brush. Again, especially with the sides, make sure you don't get any drippage down. So far, so good. And I think that's round one of varnishing. And uh, we'll give it another, you know, one or two coats. And uh, it'll be beautiful and shiny. Okay. And finally, here is our finished piece and in his natural habitat. Isn't he beautiful? As always, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I've had a lot of fun. I hope that you will like, comment, share, subscribe. I would love that. Thanks so much and hope to see you at the next one. Bye-bye for now.